He's alive. I throw him in my hands. Your actions with me, God. Not dead. I remember this Sunday school song. God's not dead. He's alive. Okay. God's. He's alive. I throw him in my hands. Put him on my feet. Put him in my heart. Go. Uh, uh. Okay. Pull him in my soul. Make a fist. Then pour, pour it you out like this. Go. Woo. Okay. I throw him all over me. All right. Everyone jump. Everyone spin. All right. Um, Ronnie writes in and says, I'm, a new, I'm, I'm new to being a true Christian, and my fiancé of four years has been with me through every step of my journey, but he hasn't always agreed with me because he's an atheist. What I think we need is a good middle ground. How do you think we can interact with each other peace, peacefully when it comes to spiritual matters? Ronnie, I, I, I hate to tell you this, and I'm sure this is a nice guy, and, and you like him a lot, but the Bible says, what fellowship has Christ with Belial? There is no fellowship mm -hmm. between an atheist and somebody who's a believer in God. I don't know what kind of relationship you've got, whether you're getting intimate with one another or whether you're just moving toward marriage or what you, you plan. But I hate to tell you, you've got to go find somebody else. Really. I mean, either he changes and gives his heart to the Lord, or you go down the road with somebody else. But there is no fellowship with, between Christ and Belial. I mean, he's going to be serving the devil. You're going to be serving God. Just that simple. And there'll be conflicts and fighting all the time. There is no middle ground. There's, there's no peace uh, in that situation. And sometimes I just wonder how God answers prayer. Have you ever thought about that? When he gets farmers praying for rain and surfers praying for sun on the same day? How does he... Hmm... Who do I answer today? Um, I know I don't know if you uh, went to Christian schools, but I went through Christian schooling. And before an exam in high school, I was praying. Okay, and my prayer didn't sound anything like the teacher's prayer, because in Christian schools they pray before the exam. The teacher stands up and she says, "Let's bow our heads before you before you start today, guys, and we'll just have a prayer." Dear Lord, please bring to mind all that these young people have studied. And help them to remember everything that they've studied so that they will reflect their knowledge perfectly. That wasn't my prayer at all. My prayer was, God, I know you could speak directly through the prophets. And their pen, they could just write thoughts straight from you. And I know I should have studied, but I didn't put in as much effort as I, I you know. And, but I know you're, you're a forgiving God. And can you just, I'll, just, I'll be your penman. You be my, you, you know, I'll just write. Go. Very different than the teacher's prayer, and I'm sure God smiled at one of the prayers and thought, fair enough, to the other prayer. Um, because my exams always looked like I hadn't studied. Righteous government. Lord, come on, proclaim that righteous government. Every time we break a cup, there's a release in the spirit. We break the power of the devil in this nation. In the name of Jesus, it's gone. In the name of Jesus, it's gone. In the name of Jesus, it's gone. Shut it out! 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 I want to hear you. Pray it out, Tori. Pray it out.